What's up guys, Terus Cousin here. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about Zustand and how to use it in a React application. This is probably going to be the last video that you're ever going to have to watch before you really understand Zustand and how it works and how to use it. And as a bonus, you just might be able to go ahead and teach this to someone else after watching this video. Are you ready? Good. Let's get into it. Now, before we talk about Zustand and before I show you how to implement it in a React application, I want to spend just a a little bit of time talking about state management in React in general and why you would even want to use something like Zustand in the first place. So in React, we have this concept of state. This is what state looks like in a React application with the use state hook. If you're unfamiliar with this, I have a tutorial on use state that you can watch to get yourself up to speed. The thing about state in React is that it is local to the component that created it, in our case, to the app component. If you have another component, like this quite accurately named other component, that needs to act access this count value, you have to pass it through props and access it that way. There is no other way. Now, this is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this. And this works really well for small applications and simple component structures. But as soon as you want to go beyond this, and as soon as you want to create a more complex application with different components that all need to access specific pieces of state that are kind of scattered around the entire application, this no longer works. The solution to do it this way with state doesn't scale really well, and you're going to run into a lot of problems. Now, React does have a native solution to this problem. It's called the context API through use context. That's another hook from React. I also have a video on that. But also that it requires you for one to wrap your entire app or at least a subset of it in a provider, which can lead to some performance problems. And that also doesn't scale really well. The real solution to this problem is state management. And that's what Zustand is. It's a library that allows you to have proper state management in your React application. And specifically, it allows you to have global state in your application. Global state it means that you can have state that is dynamic that can change but that isn't necessarily defined inside of a component and so it doesn't have the same limitations that you have to pass it through props or wrap your entire app in a provider and in this video that's exactly what i'm going to show you i'm going to show you how to build a simple counter application with zustand so you can see how it works how to create state with zustand how to access state and modify it from any component no matter where they are in the tree get ready for this because this is going to be really educational so the first thing that I want to do is I want to come here and create a new file inside of the SRC directory and I'm going to call this one store. The reason why it's called store is because Zustand functions with the concept of stores. A store in Zustand is essentially the place where you store your state and any function that updates that state. And then your React components can access the store, can access the values in the state, and can access the functions that update the state. In Zustand, the way that you create a store is you use the create function directly from Zustand. So let's import it. We're going to import create from Zustand. And because we are working in TypeScript, I'm first going to start by defining the types of our store, and then I'm going to create the store with those types. So I'm going to do type counter store. And then I'm going to do here just one property count that is going to be of type number. Then we're going to come here, make a new line, and we're going to do export const use counter store. That is going to be equal to create from Zustand. And then we're going to pass it the type that we just created. So counter store. And then we're going to use a parenthesis and give it a function. And this is going to return to us the initial state of our store, which is going to be count with a value of zero. This is the most basic version of a store in Zustand. You use the create function, you give it some types if you're working in TypeScript, and then you give it your initial state. This is equivalent to what we had here with the only difference that now this store or state, if you will, is defined outside of a component and we're no longer limited to having this locally to one component. Now, there's one really important concept in Zustand that you really have to understand, and it has to do with this use keyword right here. This use keyword, we use it for any hook in React. If you look here, we have use state. If you use use effect, you have use effect. Every single hook, including custom hooks in React, will always start with the keyword use. So what does that mean? Does that mean that this is a custom hook? Yes, you are correct. Zustand, when you create a store, it's actually a custom hook that you can use in a React component without having to wrap anything in a provider and without having to pass any props. So let me show you how this works. Let's first remove this state variable here. Let's remove the use state and let's come here and define our count once again, this time with the Zustand store. So I'm going to do const count equals use counter store. And then we're going to give this a parenthesis just like we would to any React hook. 
Then inside of here, we can actually access the state, which is properly typed as our counter store. So we can do state, and then we can return the actual selector, the actual value that we want to assign to this count right here, which for us is going to be state.count. And that's it. That's all you need to have a store and to connect it to a React component. And now if I open up the actual application that is running this, you see that now we have our account here. Everything is working as it should. That's all it took. That's one of the benefits of using Zustand is it allows you to have scalable state management structures in your React application with very little boilerplate code. So now that we have a value, the next step for us is to update that value. Because this value is a count, we want to increment or decrement the count. And to do that, it's actually super simple. So first, what we have to do, come back here to where we defined the type of our store and just add the type definitions of those two functions. So we're going to do increment. That is going to be a function that takes no arguments and returns void. And then decrement as well, takes no arguments and returns void. Then we want to add these functions to our store. So we'll come here right below count. We're going to do increment. And for now, we're not going to implement anything. I'm just going to define them empty for now, just so we get rid of these types of errors. I'm going to do the same thing for decrement. And now we have these two functions right here. Now, in Zustand, the way that you actually update this count variable is you make use of the set function that this create provides you. So this create, remember, we created a function here. This function has access to a state function, a set function, sorry, that you use to set a new value in the state. So we can use this set function here in this increment function and in this decrement function to update the state of our Zustand store. So we can come here and we can make a new line and we can do set and here we can just give it a new state, let's say count, and we're going to put one. We're going to save this, copy this, and put the same thing in decrement, and we're going to put here minus one so we know that this is decrement. For now, I'm just going to hard code the values. I'm not going to make use of the existing state value to actually increment it. We're going to do this in the next step. I just want you to see how easy it is to use these functions in React components to set some new values in a Zustan store. So we're going to come back here to our app. We're going to come back here to our other component and we're going to do two things. We're going to first get all of these functions. So we're going to do const increment equals use counter store. Again, we get access to the state and instead of the count this time, we're going to do state dot increment and we're going to get access to the increment function, which is also part of our store. Then to decrement, we're going to do the same thing and we're going to do here decrement. Then in our actual UI, we want to create two buttons to actually call these functions. So we'll come here, we'll create a new div, and then we're going to save this to get formatting. And inside of here, we'll do button on, on click increment, and then let Copilot be very helpful and complete it for us. And then do the same for decrement. And there we go. Now, if I go back to the application, just so that you get to see if this works or not, we have our two buttons here. I can press increment and it works and I can press decrement and it also works. Now, remember, we set these hard coded to one and minus one just so that we get to see that they actually work, but it's working. We can press the buttons and we're getting the updates directly in our component. And here's the benefit of using a state management library like Zustand. We have these functions here that update the state in one component, and then we're actually accessing that state variable that is getting updated in another component. And this all works super fine. You can increment this from this component, you can decrement this from this component or from another component, and you can access this value here and everything is always going to be kept in sync. This allows you to scale and build a scalable React applications without having the limits of having state that is local to a single component. So now let's go back to our store and actually change these implementations to actually get the value of the state and then increment it by plus one and decrement it by minus one. So the way that you do that is you actually change the way that you call the set function and instead of just passing a state object you can actually pass it a function that returns a new state and that function will have access to the previous values of the state so let's do that let's instead pass a function let's access the state here and all we have to do is just return a new state that we're going to do count state.count plus one and we're going to save right? So this set function gives you access to the state, which then you can use and you can do state.count plus one, and it's going to work. We can do the same thing for decrement, we can come here, we can do decrement. And instead of plus one, we can do minus one. 
If we save this and go back to our application, let's see what happens. I press increment and it's incrementing the count by one every single time. I press decrement and it's decrementing the count by one every single time. This fully works. Great, so now let me show you something else. These functions here, so far, they were synchronous, right? We just call these functions, we directly set some value, and we didn't have to wait for anything. But the reality is, if you're building a complex application, chances are you're gonna have to await for some data to return to you to then be able to set the state with that data. Think of an API fetch, right? You're fetching something from backend, this will take some time before you get the data back, and then once you do, you want to put it in a state. That is called an asynchronous action, and Zustin actually makes this super simple. So let's come here, right below increment, we can define a new function, we can do increment async, and this is going to be a function that instead of returning void, is actually going to return a promise of type void, right? So again, still returning void just under a promise, and then we can define our implementation, we can do increment async, that is going to be async, and then here we can just return Basically, what we can do, let's wait for one second because we actually don't have an, an API implemented, so we have to mock it. So we're gonna do await new promise, resolve, resolve, yes. And then we're gonna do set time out, resolve a thousand for one second. Let's see, what is the issue? We need a comma here. There we go. So now this function is first going to wait for one second before proceeding to the next line because it is asynchronous and we're using the await keyword. And then what we can do is we can literally just copy this over here and we can just paste the same state update just asynchronously and this will just work. You don't have to play around with any middleware like you have to in other state management solutions. You can just set your state whenever you're ready, whenever you have your data and it's actually going to work. So now let's go back to our component and then instead of increment, let's just do increment async. So we're going to do increment async, maybe here, yeah, this is fine. And now if we go back to our application, we can press increment async, it's going to wait a second and then it's going to increment the count by one. Press it again, wait a second, and then it's going to increment it by one again. If I press decrement, it's instantaneous because decrement is a synchronous function. This is how easy it is to just have asynchronous updates in your Zustin store. Now, if you were actually fetching some data from an API, what you would probably do is something like this. You would do const response, equals await and then your fetch request instead of this wait here and then you would just use response or response.data or whatever it looks like for your specific implementation and just put it here in your state it's literally that easy zustant doesn't care when you have your data ready as soon as you're ready whenever you have your data just call set and it's going to work all right cool now let me show you something else that's really useful and really cool about zustant we've said before that this is a custom hook this use counter store is a custom hook and that's why we called it with this use keyword here but the thing is this doesn't have to be a custom hook. You can actually use this outside of a component and access it directly in just any random function. So let me show you how this works. Let's go back here and let's define a function outside of our component that we're gonna do, that we're gonna call const log count. We're gonna have this taken no arguments and then in the implementation, we're gonna actually access that store, but not in the same way that we access it here because we're outside of a component. What we can do is we can do const count equals use counter store and instead of calling it we can just do dot and then get state and then get the count this way and then we can come here we can do console dot log count and we can access the count directly using this way. This is really useful because oftentimes you're gonna to wanna to have a function that you don't want to define inside of a component that you want to manipulate the store. And instead of having to pass the actual functions like increment and decrement to actually manipulate the store, you can just directly access the store in any function using get state, and then you can do things with that state, right? So now if I call this function, I'm gonna to have to call it inside of the component. So we're gonna do use effect, and then we're gonna just call this once on mount. That's gonna be log count. And then let's not forget the dependency array. If I save this and go back to our application and open up the console here and just refresh, we have here count zero. 
This is locked twice because I'm currently on strict mode and when strict mode, React is gonna run every hook twice. Now, please don't get confused because although we are calling this lock function inside of the component, inside of this use effect, because we have to integrate it into the component lifecycle of React components, the actual value does not come from the component. The actual value is coming from here and this you could do in any function, even if it's not used directly in a component. So this is really, really useful. And also, just like you can get the state of a Zustan store outside of a component, you can also update the state in the same way. So first, let's come here. Let's remove this count because we're no longer going to be needing it. And then instead of get state, we can do set state. And then we can pass it a value, which I'm going to pass count one. Then we get rid of this console log because we don't need it. And then maybe we can rename this to set count save this and again we're going to have to call it in a use effect so that it actually gets run when this component gets mounted if i now go back to our application you're going to see that our count is one if i refresh our count is one because it's being set on mount through this function that again is not defined in the component is defined outside this is a really cool functionality because this allows you to have the flexibility to put your code anywhere that you want and it all gets integrated nicely with sustand and also with the component lifecycle of react we're calling this set state here which is actually triggering this update because this component is listening to the count and then we're getting the up-to-date count in this component so it works from updating a value outside of a component to actually getting that component to re-render it's fully integrated and honestly it's beautiful Cool. Now, before we end the tutorial, I want to leave you with two best practices that you absolutely have to follow in Zustan because that's going to make your life a lot easier and it's actually going to prevent you from having performance problems in your application. The first one is whenever you're accessing a piece of state here, like we've done here, or a function, whatever it is, you always want to try to be as specific as possible and only access the thing that you need. What we could have done here, instead of this, we could have accessed all of the state directly, right? So instead of state.count, we could have done just state and then destructured the count here, like so. I'm gonna do this and destructure. This would also give us access to the count in exactly the same way, but this would actually be less performant. And the reason for that is that whatever you give here as the return of this function is what this component is going to listen to. So if you give it state, this component is now going to listen to this entire state and re-render whenever anything in it changes. Now, in our example, our state is actually pretty simple. There's only count that can actually change. So this isn't really a problem. But as soon as you have multiple variables that do multiple different things, this component is going to re-render every time any of those changes. So ideally, you don't want this you want to avoid this so it's always better to access the value directly and only render what you need if you do this this component is only ever going to render when this count is different even if something else in state changed the second best practice that you have to follow is whenever you're defining your stores you always want to group them by specific features for example this counter store here has everything to do with the count it has the state variables of the count and the functions that actually update the count it doesn't have anything else if you wanted to have some extra functionality in our app perhaps we wanted to add authentication we would have to create our own store and call it the, the auth store and then store the pieces of state that are related to the authentication and the functions that would update to the state having it in a separate store is better because it makes it more modular you can have these in separate files and all of the components that need specific things from a store can just import it from that specific store it's going to make it super easy for you to add more functionality to your app to create more stores literally as many stores as you want and to put all of the things that you want in those stores without having everything be in one file and even worse without having everything be in one giant store you don't want to have one giant store that is going to be a nightmare to maintain and that will not scale well at all so I really encourage you to follow these two best practices because they are really going to help you as you build your React applications. And now what you have to do is you have to look at this code and really try to understand it and even better, play around with it and try to make it better. There's actually a GitHub repository in the description that you can check out and you can build upon this. Working with this code is the best way to really cement everything that you've learned in this tutorial. And it's really gonna make sure that you properly understand Zustan. And as I said in the beginning of this video, if you do that, you're probably not going to have to watch another video on this ever again. If you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more tutorials, please do leave a thumbs up please click here to subscribe it would really help me out a lot you can also click here to watch a different video of mine which youtube seems to think that you're gonna like and with that being said my name has been Darius Kozin this is Kozin Solutions thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video ciao ciao